Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, improving performance of your React components. So let's say you have like you have your app that uh, maybe has been growing over weeks and months and years, and maybe you have a lot of people working on it. You have a lot of components, and you sort of notice maybe certain parts of your app are running slower than you would like, and you're not really sure why. So how do you even get started trying to deal with that? Um, so I'm going to talk about sort of how do you figure out what components might be causing issues, uh, what could be causing those issues, and then what to do to fix it. Um, so the first step is finding culprits. So I'm going to talk about two tools. And the first one is uh, the just your like Chrome DevTools performance tab. So if you're in the, like I believe, 15 and 16 of React, uh, you can just go in performance, hit record, perform an action, like click a button, type into a form, something you've noticed is slow, you hit stop, and it'll bring up uh, like a ton of information. It'll basically show you everything that's been fired off during that time you're recording. Um, and you can see like which components you're spending a lot of time in. Um, if you're in an older version of React, you can do this with React add-ons. I think there's like React add-ons perf, and it has similar features. Um, so this is one way you can sort of get an idea of which components are taking up the most time. Um, and it is uh, only running in dev mode, so it's going to be a little bit slower than it will in production, but the relative speed of components should remain the same. So um, that's the first tool that you can look through. Um, and the next tool uh, is just this, uh, why did you update? So this is just like a very, very simple little package. You can just npm yarn install, and you just insert one line into your React code, like literally anywhere that says, oh, why did you update React? Um, and you can configure it a little bit, but basically what it's going to do is it's just going to print out to the console every time you render something when the props haven't changed. Uh, and I'm going to talk more about what that means in a bit, but what you want to look for is like it's going to show the name of the component that's causing it to have a issue. So you can see which components might be showing up more often in your console. Uh, those are the ones you're going to want to start concentrating on. So between those two things, hopefully you have got an idea of like a couple of your more problematic components. Um, and then the, the question at that point is, why are those components slow? Um, so maybe you're going to find that you have some like super inefficient script running in your component, but that's probably not what's going to be the case when you're not sure what is causing it to be slow. Um, what's Probably the case is going to be um, you're going to go into the performance tab. This is another thing you can see. Um, it's going to show you sort of what the time was spent on, and you're going to see that it's spending a lot of time in sort of like React land and things that aren't your code but are React code. Um, and so what's happening is you're doing excess renders and you're doing excess reconciliations. So that might be surprising to people that use React because the whole point is that it's supposed to be really efficient at rendering by having that virtual DOM, right? But it still has to sort of maintain that virtual DOM and compare it to the real DOM. And that's the reconciliation process. And so it's a lot faster than updating the DOM each time, but it's still, it's not free. So that reconciliation, if you're doing that unnecessarily over and over and over again, that's going to build up to slowing down your components, slowing down your application. Um, so, sort of to talk a little bit about that. This is uh, like your component tree. So at the top you have each box is representing one of your components maybe. At the top you have you know, your app. And then sort of the green boxes here are all of your components that need to be updated. The red ones are ones that do not. And then typically the way that React handles updates is if the parent component doesn't update, none of the children are even checked. Um, so basically, the goal is to have as many gray, unchecked components as possible, where you're not performing that reconciliation. Uh, but you want to be careful to avoid this situation where a child doesn't get updated that should have been updated because its parent was not updated. So that's sort of the goal, is sort of how can we have as many components not reconcile without hitting this situation. Um, 
So sort of what are some things that might cause excess reconciliations? Um, so the first one is passing down unnecessary props. So maybe you have done something like this. Uh, you're just giving absolutely every prop down. Uh, or maybe you've refactored your component and it's still getting props that it's not using anymore. Um, Any time that like, a prop that's unrelated now to that component's functionality is being updated, it's still sort of triggering an update for that component. And that is going to cause a reconciliation that didn't need to happen. Um, and another thing that happens, um, so object literals defined in your render function will cause extra reconciliations. And the reason is because every time you run that function and you see this like, you know, style equals an object with margin of zero, it's a new object, it's a new reference. And when React performs its reconciliation, it's seeing that the objects aren't equal and it's going to have to perform a reconciliation for that tree following that. Um, so, uh, so the reference of this object literal is going to change each time React runs that render function. So it just does a shallow comparison between the current state and the next state, and it's not going to catch that these objects are in fact the same because in its mind they're two totally different objects in two different places in memory. Um, and so similarly to that, uh, anonymous functions. Uh, so probably all of us have this somewhere in our React app where we're just handling a change function like this. Uh, every time you make this function, it's a, new, it's a new closure, it's a new function, it's a new reference, and it's not going to realize that it doesn't need to update that, that component. Um, so those are sort of three of like the big uh, killers that a lot of us probably do and didn't realize it was hurting performance just based on how React handles its reconciliation process. So how we can reduce reconciliations is by doing things like defining constants and binding functions outside of render. So instead of doing this, where you have your uh, change function written right in line, you can you know, create that function somewhere. Um, bind it in your constructor, and every time you reference it, it's going to be that same bound function, and it's going to be the same reference. Um, and then something like this with an object literal, if it's styles, maybe you want to do something else where you have you know, a CSS class or some other way of handling that, but you, know, you can just define any constants at the top of your file, at, like anywhere outside of your component, and just reference that it's going to be the same object every time. Um, and then basically, you know, just only send the props that you need for that component. Um, so other things you can do once you get past that point is uh, there's a lifecycle method called should component update. So basically, uh, when you think back to that little diagram we were looking at before of the, the tree, all of the green ones are the ones that return true in should component update. The red ones return false. So by default, React just returns true for this should component update. But you can write your own. It takes in the next props in the next state. And you can you know, determine your own logic for whether that component should actually update based on what's changed. Um, and so a pretty common thing with that is to just do a shallow comparison between the current props in state and the next props in state. And that's so common that, in fact, React does this for you with pure component. So this is literally all you have to do is the only difference between component and pure component is that it does this shallow compare of the props in state um, in should component update. So uh, you can just make that four letter change when you're like creating your component class. Uh, and it can, this actually like dramatically reduced the number of excess reconciliations that we had in several of our components. Um, uh, the other thing that you should note about ship component update is that if you're using Redux, so React Redux has its own implementation of ship component update. So all of your connected components are more or less already implementing a pure component. Uh, functionality. Um, 
So right now, if you're having performance issues there, this is maybe not going to help. But I think actually they're getting rid of that in the next version of React Redux, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then the other thing to remember is, like we were saying, you don't want to end up in a situation where you've stopped your parent from rendering. And so the child that should have updated is now missing an update. So if you're refactoring something, you just want to like keep that in mind. Um, and then you know if you're saying like, oh, I don't want to do that because I don't want to make my functional components into like class components just to get this lifecycle method. Well, recompose is an option for you. It's got um, a couple of methods that could work for this, like pure, which will make your component pure, or update only for keys where you can give it specific keys that are props in that component that you only want to update if those have changed. Um, so that's one option, but there are other options if you are really into your functional components. Um, and yeah, basically, um, in summary, you just want to use some tools to figure out which components are causing problems for you. Um, so why did you update and the performance dev tools are what I talked about. Um, you want to reduce unnecessary reconciliations and you can do that with lifecycle methods, with pure component, uh, and by defining all of your constants and binding all your functions outside of your render function. And basically, you want to keep your components rendering based on only the state and props. And preferably, you want those to be immutable so that when you use like pure component and it does a shallow comparison, those two things will always reflect updates when they're updated and not reflect updates when they're not updated. Um, and yeah, that's it. Yeah.